Hey there, this is Math 8, Unit 2, Lesson 2, looking today at what's called a circular grid. And we're going to talk about how to dilate figures on a circular grid. Normally, or so far I should say, we've been talking about dilating figures on just a regular grid like so. But we're going to move today to talk about a circular grid and how we can move pattern or geometric figures around. Remember that dilation is simply a way to make scaled copies of geometric figures. That's what a dilation is. And so today we're going to make that scaled copy, but we're going to do so on a circular grid. So it's kind of fun. It's kind of cool to see. Circular grid is just kind of neat to look at here. When you looked at this first picture, we had a little moment in class where you were going to be talking about things you noticed and things you wondered. And you might notice, for example, that all these lines come together at a central point right there. You might have noticed that as a result, that means they, all the circles also tend to, tend to share the same center right this circle the center of this circle is right there but so is the center of this circle here it's also right there you might be able to tell perhaps if you got a ruler out or something that the the distance of growth from one line to the next is the same right it's expanding by the same at the same rate the same proportion of growth there so a little bit like if you had grid graph paper all your squares end up being the same size this is happening here with a circle as well so then for your first activity, what you talked about was called droplet on a droplet on the surface looked like this. And you had a large circle D, right, which is a dilation of the smallest circle C right here in the middle with a center point of P. All right, and that's where we, we began this lesson. And what it asked you to do is it said, well, let's take a look at these guys here. And we're going to draw four points on the smaller circle. All right, so smaller circle is he, and we're gonna, here we're going to label them E, F, and G. So it really didn't matter where you place them. You could place them wherever you wanted to. We could place this one E. We can call this one F. We can call this one G. And we can call this one H. Just anywhere is just fine. Not a problem at all. Then it said to draw rays from P through each of those four points. And so what that meant we were doing is we were going to take the... The points here and we're going to draw a ray through the the lines all right so if i took this line here and going through the points an array array would look like something like this there for this one on the that one there we might line it up and have something along the lines of this and for this one g perhaps we have something along the lines of, of this Okay, and so those are our rays we have going through those points, and they're also, of course, going through the center point as well. Then it asks us to label points um, E prime, F prime, G prime, H prime on the place where the, where the rays meet the larger circle. So if this was E, it's going to meet over here at E prime, and F would meet right here at F prime, G is meeting right here at g prime and h is meeting right here at h prime okay so that's what we were working on there to show how these points are dilated from here to here looking at that shape there okay and that was the idea that you started with just as an idea now when we complete the table what it wanted us to look at was down here in the row labeled S, write the distance between P and the point on the smaller circle. So for example, for the small circle, that's our S, this is our small one here, the point E was going to be 1, 2 units away. Point F is also 1, 2 units away. Point G was 2 units and H was 2 units. When you looked at the larger circle, what we noticed was that it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units away. And if I looked at F just quickly, I'd also be able to count and notice that it's one, two, three, four, five, six away as well. And the pattern continued there. So what we can tell from not just the picture only, but also from this table, which is what we're used to, is that I have a scale factor that takes a small circle to the larger circle. And that scale factor is what's moving down this way. And that would be multiplying in this case by three. It's three times the distance to move from the small circle to the large circle. That's the dilation. So scale factor for that dilation is three times 
the distance of the original. Okay? From that, you moved into a similar activity, but now instead of just a point, we connected the point on the circular grid to form a polygon. We had polygon A, B, C, D. And asked you to first of all dilate each vertex of polygon A, B, C, D using P as the center and a scale factor of two. So our scale factor is times two. That's what we're gonna be looking at here. So to do that, what we did is we took A, and if we noticed, first of all, the original A was at one, two, three, four, right? So A was at four. And so for our new one, because we're gonna do times two, we're gonna put A at eight. So four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's where A prime is gonna be. For B, B is currently at one, two. And our scale factor is two, so B prime is gonna be at four. So two, three, four. And that's where our B prime is gonna be. C is currently at position one, two, three, four, five. So five times two is 10. So we continue six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And that's C prime. D is at one, two, three. And we're gonna multiply by two. We end up with six. So we're at three, four, five, six. And that's where D prime is going to be. At this point, then I can connect those together. Right, so I could take a line here and we can say, well, let's connect our lines connect our lines from dot to dot right through the middle. We're gonna make this new polygon here, here, and finally here. There's our new polygon. Okay, with the new vertices here, A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. And we draw the segments there to show the dilation to create that new shape with a scale factor of two. So some things we notice is that it does seem to have, the vertices are all on the same ray going into point zero. It seems to be growing at a proportional rate all the way around because it has the same scale factor. It then says to choose a few more points on the sides of the original polygon and transfer them using the same dilation. So let's say that I picked a point, mm, doesn't really matter. I picked a point right here, okay. Now at this point, we're a little bit more than two. We're one, two and a bit, maybe two and a half. So two and a half, not quite two. If I dilated that point, I would end up here, right there on the same line, okay? If I picked one, maybe that was more on a line, okay? If I picked a point like right here, I'm at one, two. If I went to four, three, four, we can see I'm right there. So the points would continue to dilate at that same scale factor, just moving along, no problem there. It then says for, the, for number five, to dilate each vertex with P as the center uh, with a scale factor of a half. So we're gonna be reducing things, we're gonna be cutting it in half, times a half. And we're gonna label A as E, so A becomes an E, B becomes an F, and C becomes a G, and D becomes an H. So let's take a look here at back at where we started. And so we're gonna go ahead and use a different color. So if I had four to start with for A, so four times a half would be two. So for E, instead of having four, we're gonna go one, two, and that's where E would be. B, we're already at two, so two times a half is equal to one. So B is gonna drop here at one away from P. C is currently at five, so five times a half becomes five over two, which is two and a half. A little bit different there, right? But that's okay. We can start here, we can go one, two and a half. We're gonna be right there in the middle. And then finally for H, we have three times a half becomes three over two, which is one and a half. And we would say one and a half about right there. So then if we connect our dots again, we have a shape that looks something like this. And this, and this, and this. Okay? And so we have a dilated, a smaller shape with a scale factor of a half to make the smaller shape inside of our original, which is still inside of our larger. Okay, and you probably talked about things you noticed, things you saw, similarities, differences. One of the key things is, is that all these points 
are on this line right there, aren't they? I didn't label my points, I'm sorry about that. That should be E, F, G, and H. <laughs> sorry about that. But they all share that common line, that common ray through point zero. The dilations happen from that center and they work their way out. So that's what we're looking at with 2.3, okay? So there was an activity, uh, are you ready for more? And you could have done this one as well, um, talking about these links. So that's, your teacher may have done it, may not have. Let's gonna move on down to 2.4, just real quick. This was an optional activity for 2.4. And it says to, first of all, to dilate polygon, EFGH using Q as a center, the center dilation to scale factor of one third. The image F is already shown. You may need to draw more rays from Q in order to find the images of the other points. So let's begin by doing that. I'm gonna start with Q as my center, all right? And I'm gonna draw just some more rays from there going through the points that I have. Because whatever points of dilation I have, they're gonna be on these same, these same ray line, these same rays, okay? So I'm gonna go Q, H and draw a ray out from Q through H. And I have point E here as well. So I'll go from Q out through E and we have something like that. So I'm just adding some lines through my, through my center to my points. Now I can look at the scale factor of, of one third. Let's start with G. G is the distance of one, two, three, four, five, six away. So G is six away. Six times one third is gonna be equal to six over three, which is equal to two. So my G prime would be one, two away from the center Q. There's G prime. H is at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine times one third is nine over three, which equals three. So H prime will be at one, two, three. And there's H prime. E is currently at one, two, three. So three times one third is three over three, which is one. So E prime would be right here, okay? So now if I connect my lines here, make my new shape, I have a shape that looks like this, and this, and this, and that. And there's my new shape for this element here with a scale factor of one third. So it's kind of cool to be able to see how this, this um, the circle allows us, with a circular grid, allows us to make the uh, dilations and to translate a shape from one place to another making those moves there it's kind of cool so that was the lesson there as a summary <laughs> a quick summary just remember that for today's lesson what we're talking about is that you can use a circular grid to help you make the dilation <coughs> and the radius of the smallest circle is one unit okay and the radius of each successive circle is one unit more than the previous one, meaning it's growing by one and two and three and four. Continue to grow there. To do a dilation, you always need to have a center of dilation, that point in the middle from which everything works its way out of. And as you're working your way out, we tend to see that it works on a line like so. Those points are all lined up and your vertices all stay connected there. Okay, we'll pause there and then we'll come back and do our homework in just a second. Okay, so here we're looking at tonight's homework. It says here are circles C and D and point O is a center dilation. And the dilation takes circle C to D. Plot a point on circle C and label the point P. So here's circle C. I'm just gonna put a point right here and we'll call it P. Plot where P goes when the dilation is applied. In order to determine where it goes, I need to draw, first of all, a ray through the center of dilation through my point P. So I can draw this line right like that. By doing that, I then can notice where it crosses circle D and I can label that P prime. Now it says to plot a point on circle D, we'll just pick one right here, here's circle D, and label it Q. Plot a point that takes the dilation to Q. So we'll go here, and we'll go here, and we'll draw a line right through that. And we're gonna plot our point right there, and we'll label that Q prime. 
okay? And so that's how that works there. It's helpful and important to draw that line from the center out towards the outer way as ray to see where does it cross our circles there. Okay, next one. Here is triangle ABC. Let's turn the page so we can see it. Because <laughs> it's not on that page, for me at least. Here's triangle ABC. And we're going to dilate each vertex of triangle ABC using P as a center. And we're first going to do a scale factor of 2 and then draw the connecting points. Okay, so this is a great question. We've done this before with the grid before. Now we're doing it with a circular grid. So let's take a look at initially at uh, A. A is currently one, two steps away. Okay, so A is two steps away. A is at two. With a scale factor of two, I'm going to multiply by two to go to my new place, which is four. So two, three, four, and I can plot that right there. C is currently at one, two, three. So there's C is at three. Multiply by the scale factor and I end up with six. So I keep counting three, four, five, six, and I plot the point there for where my C is going to be at. C prime, A prime. B, we're at one, two, three, four. And I multiply by two, that extends me out to eight. So four, five, six, seven, eight is right there at B prime. And now what I can do is I can play connect the dots. And we can go like this. And we can go like this right here. And then we can go like so. And we have our new triangle right there. Part B says to dilate it with a scale factor of a half. So I can go back to the original, right? The original A, which was two, and multiply by a half. Two times a half is two over two, which is equal to one. So for point A, I can go out here, two, one. B, I'm going the right order this time, originally was at four. So four times a half is four over two, which is equal to two. So we go one, two, for our other B one. And C, initially is, we set at three. So three times one over two is three over two, or one and a half. So we can go one and a half there. And then we can connect our dots to make our new triangle that has a scale factor of one half. Or here. And then finally to here, like so. Okay, so there's what we have. It says now to measure the longest side of each of the three triangles and what do you notice? All right, well the longest side, hard to say on my picture, looks, looks kind of like this is our longest side. So my longest side, let's go with centimeters. My longest side here is I have about nine, let's just say with nine or eight and a half maybe. Let's go with, we can go eight and a half. So I have 8.5. On this one, I'm at four and, well, about four and 2.5, four and two fifths. And here, line to half line, I'm at two and a bit, and we might say it's two and 0.125. Oops, sorry, one, sorry, 12. Yeah, one, two, five. And so what's happening here is that as I go from out to in, if I'm going this direction, we can see that my scale factor is times a half, times a half. If I'm going this way, I can see I'm multiplying by two, multiplying by two, and those are the scale factors that we use. If you look at the actual angle measurements, all right, and see what's happening, this one's a little bit trickier just because your drawing may not be perfect or to scale, okay? But if you look at the angle measurements, what you're gonna I probably notice is in this case here, this angle measurement, the initial angle, looks to be slightly bigger than 50, maybe about 53 or so, 52, 53. Let's go to 53 for now. If I measure this outside angle over here, I'm also in about that same spot of about 53 degrees, whatever that might be. And my tiny angle on the inside, the little triangle, is also, once again, take a look at it, still in that same spot about 53 degrees. This is something we talked about in previous lessons that our angles, even though we have changes in, in the size of the shape because of scale factoring, angles always stay the same. So our angle measurement 
stay the same. They do not change, okay? Let's look at the last page here. We have, describe a rigid transformation that you could use to show the polygons are congruent. So for a shape like this, to get that over to there, I might recall that if I use some patty paper, for example, if I needed to, if I had a shape like this, and I trace that there, I can tell that it's not the same as the one that's given here, right? They don't quite match up there very well. I might need to draw this a little darker just so you can see it. So I'll make a little darker line, a little darker line. Won't be perfect, but then you can see through the paper. So they don't match up the right way. But in order for it to match up, if I flip my paper over, they do match, which means I would need to do a reflection, right? A reflection over like the y axis or over a vertical line here so i need to do a reflection first and then after i do the reflection then because i'd be at this like size right there i would then need to translate the shape down where you would probably say in this case here this is point c you'd want to get maybe point c to match point F or A to match point D so that you end up in the same place. So that C lands on top of F and I'm set to go. That would be a transformation. Reflect over a vertical line and then translate it down there. Okay, number four. It says this line has been partitioned into three angles. Is there a triangle with these three angle measures? We're gonna go with most likely if this actually adds to 180 and a triangle has the sum of its angles to be 180, then it certainly does. And it does work, 99 plus 39 plus 42 does equal 180 degrees. But we could show that as well. We could draw for ourselves a line. Let's just start with a line. So here's a line right there. And we can make an angle measurement of 99 degrees. So I put my line there. 99 is, let's see, here's 90, that's 100. So 99 is right there. So now I'm gonna take this and make a straight line from this point to that point. So there's my 99 degrees. And now if I just draw a connecting line between these two, and go from here to here, I can measure the inside angles here. So let's take a look at this angle measurement. This angle measurement, starting right there at the corner, going across, we look there and we are at, look at this guy here, this shows me 38, 39 degrees, that's probably a 39er. Again, it's not perfect because it's just my little sketch drawing. I could look at this one right here, and when I line up my line and put my dot in the right spot, I see my line is right here, and we're gonna go to, looks like, 40 something, 42, 43. We know we're aiming for 42, so maybe about 42 degrees, okay? Probably my scale's not perfect, but it does show you that the idea is, yes, you can create a triangle with just those three things there. Hope that helps out with your homework today. Good luck on the rest of them.